Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Jeff from Shop in the Point and Dead on Dave Productions. And now that the 2016 trade deadline has passed in Major League Baseball, the talk begins to take place. You know, who's the favorites going into October? Who's going to take the World Series? Who are the winners of the trade deadline? All that stuff. And I'm just going to give you my quick opinions on it. And uh, let's uh, not waste any time here. Let's get right into this. Uh, the first one being that pops off the top of my head, obviously the Brewers trading Jonathan Lucroy and Jeremy Jeffress to the Texas Rangers for Lewis Brinson, Luis Ortiz, and a player to be named later. Now we all knew the Milwaukee, Bre uh, the Milwaukee Brewers were going to trade Jonathan Lucroy at some point, and we thought that he was going to be going to the Cleveland Indians. But the Indians were a part of the no trade clause in Luke, uh, Luke Roy's contract, and he was uh, Luke Roy was a little bit upset that you know he wasn't going to be a full time catcher because the Indians still got Jan Gomes over there, who they got locked up for a few more years. Which it, honestly, having Luke Roy there would still be an upgrade. I thought Jan Gomes would be having a nice, uh, real nice year for those Indians because that's why I drafted him in my fantasy league, and that fell flat on its face. So getting Luke Roy would have been real big for the Indians. It really, uh, really would have. But Luke Roy said, "No, I want to be a full-time catcher. I don't want to flip between first base and uh, and catcher." And so, no, I'm not going there. I don't want to. I don't want to be a catcher for the best starting staff in baseball. I don't get that one. But you know, he goes to a real good Texas Ranger team, and uh, they needed some help at catcher, and uh, that's a really nice pickup for them. Plus, they get Jeremy Jeffress in the trade. I mean, he's got 27 saves this year. He's got a 2-2-2 ERA, so he's ha he's been having a real nice year for the Brew Crew. And uh, they need uh, they the Rangers need some help in that bullpen. They've kind of rotated closers recently, and uh, now you get that you get that certified lockdown closer in there in Jeffries. So uh, I like that trade from that standpoint. Plus, the Rangers also picked up one of my favorite players that I've seen play the last uh, last decade and a half or so, and that's Carlos Beltran from the New York Yankees. Carlos Beltran is having a real nice year. You know, after his first two years in the Bronx, he, you know, he wasn't wasn't doing a whole lot, and we thought his uh, career might be done. He put two great years together here in St. Louis, and you know, thought going to three years in the Bronx that he was going to be, uh, you know, he was going to be, you know, like he was here in St. Louis, and that really didn't uh, turn out. But this year, he's really turned it around. You know, Beltran's got 22 bombs, he's hitting 304, and he's driven in 64 runs. Now, he's cooled off a little bit from that great start he got off to. But, again, this is a great move for, for October. I mean, he's not a rock out there, or he's not a boulder out there in the outfield. I mean, he can still play a little bit of outfield. He can still move a little bit, and he's still got that cannon for an arm. Plus, what you're getting at the plate, I mean, he's this guy is one of the best switch hitters of all time. And, you know, come October, he really turns it on. He's got 16 bombs in the postseason. Which is a damn shame because this guy has never won a World Series. You people always forget how great this guy is in the post series because the only image people have of him is him getting locked up on that nasty curveball by Wainwright in the 2006 NLCS. But this guy, it, come October, like David Ortiz, he just turns it on, man. The guy is so clutch. He comes up with big hit after big hit in the postseason, but people just remember that one time he didn't against Wainwright. Which, that made me really happy at that time. But, you know, I really like that move. I really like the moves they, the Rangers made picking up Beltron and Lucroy. I thought they did a very nice job. Okay, now going back to those Cleveland Indians that I mentioned earlier. And I like what they did a lot here, getting Andrew Miller from the New York Yankees. And you can make the argument that Andrew Miller, you know, is better than a role this Chapman. You know, we had Chapman go to the Cubs uh, uh, about a week ago uh, for a slew of prospects, including Tor uh, Gliber Torres, uh, Rashad Crawford, and Billy McKinney. Plus, they got Adam Warren back. I mean, they gave up a lot for him, and so did the Indians uh, in getting Miller. They gave up their number one, number five, and number 30 prospects in the organization. And now you get Miller... You get Miller in the back end of that bullpen. Oh my God, uh, I I really like what the Indians are doing. They got the best starting staff in the league, and now you just add another great arm to that bullpen. I would have liked to seen the 
the Indians get another bat. I thought Beltron would have been a great fit there in Cleveland, but they get Andrew Miller, and you know th- th- this should be fun. The American League is going to be fun going uh, down the stretch here because I believe the two best teams in the American League are those Cleveland Indians and Texas Rangers, and the moves that these teams have made at the deadline or around the deadline, uh, you know, I-, I think they're the favorites. Plus, you got a lot of great teams in the AL East. You got the Red Sox, you got the Orioles. You got the uh, the you got the Blue Jays out there, so it's gonna be fun in the American League going down, going down the stretch here. And again, talking about those New York Yankees who were very active this trade deadline, they were sellers. They were sellers at the trade deadline. When was the last time we heard that? I think it was like '89 or something. You could have said they were sellers. I mean, just the amount of prospects they got back. I mean, they they easily. They're probably easily in the top 10, if not the top 5, of farm systems in the league with all the young talent that they brought in. I just, uh, I mean, man, you just look at the, the where these prospects are ranked. I mean, they did a phenomenal job. And this is long overdue for the Yankees because, you know, they've been trying to buy their way to the championships for forever. And now they're finally changing it up. And uh, that's good. As Billy Beans, or Brad Pitt said... In Moneyball, adapt or die, and the Yankees are finally adapting. Teixeira is going to be out of there eventually. Sabathia is going to be out there eventually. A Rod's going to be out eventually. So they're finally going in a new direction, and this is good to see for the Yankees. And uh, okay, so the Cincinnati Reds traded Jay Bruce to the New York Mets for Dilson Herrera and Max Wotel, or Wotel, I can't, I can never say that guy's name, but that's probably just because I'm an idiot, but, you know, the Reds, the Reds getting, uh, or excuse me, the Mets getting Jay Bruce, it looks like they're trying to catch lightning in a bottle again, you know, Bruce has shown inconsistency, but when Jay Bruce is on, I mean, he'll put, he can produce like Cespedes did last year for the Mets, so, I mean, I really like this move for the Mets because they need somebody. They need somebody that can drive in runs. Because this team driving in runs this year with runners in scoring position, oh my god, they are abysmal. They are abysmal. Th- they could very well be under 200 right now. I, I looked at it the, a couple days ago when the Cardinals were playing the Mets, or just after that series. They were hitting 203 with runners in scoring position. They are abysmal. So you get Jay Bruce in there who's got 25 bombs, 80 RBI, and he doesn't have a big on-base percentage. Plus, Jay Bruce will give you a cannon for an arm out in the outfield. They need somebody who can drive in runs. And, you know, getting a guy like Jay Bruce, who I believe is up there, if not leading the league in RBI right now, he's, uh, he's up there. You know, driving in 80 runs in Cincinnati, that's saying something, man. It really is. So I really, uh, I really like this pickup for the Mets because they definitely, definitely need another bat in this, uh, in this lineup because it is not, uh, not fun watching this team hit at all. Really isn't. So the Reds get back Dilson Herrera, second baseman, uh, for his, for his career. He's got, uh, or Herrera this year's got six bombs and he's, uh, driven in 17 runs and uh, let's see here. Yeah, he's got a 308 on base, only hitting uh, only hitting two 215. So I mean, he's not setting the world on fire, but you, you know you're waiting for this guy to to finally put it together a little bit, and uh, hopefully for the Reds' sake he will. I, I'm still surprised the Reds didn't sell more at the deadline. I'm I, I'm really not. I, I I'm just uh, the, the Reds still need to do more. I mean, they still got a lot of guys over there with Cozart. They didn't move him. They didn't move uh, that dude BP. And there weren't any takers for Joey Votto. He still got some years left on his contract there. So that is your Cincinnati Reds deal. Let's see how many of these I can rattle off before it before it goes out. My footage goes away here. Let's see. The San Diego Padres got Colin Ray back for Luis Castillo or Luis Castillo. And you know, if you remember, Ray was part of the Cashner deal, and Ray comes out in his first start against the Cardinals and gets hurt. In his first start, so the Marlins send him back. They get Luis Castillo back, but they keep Kashner. So, did the Padres know that Ray wasn't right? And that's not the kind of reputation you want around the league. If you knew he was hurt, 
there's no way you should send him in that deal. You do not want that reputation of being that guy who sends people that they who withhold information from other teams, withholding that kind of information. If they knew Ray was hurt and they followed through on that deal, yes, I know it's buyer beware, but still, you don't want that reputation. So the Padres get Colin Ray back from the Miami Marlins. I've never seen that in my life. And, you know, I might need to make another video here because I am running out of time on this. And there's no way that I can uh, that I can get to all of these because I there's a few more of these I wanna I wanna talk about here. But I guess we'll just leave this one here and I will start I will pick this up on another video. So let me know what you guys think of the trades I talked about in the comments below. Also, we I did a show with Dead on Dave yesterday, a live reaction trade deadline show. Should be it was a lot of fun. So you guys should go check that out in the description below. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for me, guys, on this one. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you might shoot me a tweet at GrandSlam87. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Have a good one, guys.